Hi everybody, it's Luke from Foot Tech. Today we're going to talk about a game called Fininho. Fininho is something you're probably going to hear more of in the coming years. Germany have just revamped all of their youth system and they're implementing this game across all of their age groups but with a particular focus on the younger age groups. Uh, it's a game that was developed by a coach called Horst Wien, H-O-R-S-T-W-E-I-N. Definitely worth having a look at and just researching some of his ideas. Uh, Spain also implemented a lot of his ideas a, a good few years ago, which led to them dominating world football for quite some time and producing some of the best players in the world at the time as well. So let's dive into it. Let's take a look at what Fininho is, the benefits of it and how you can get it into your sessions. So this is your basic setup. You've got a 3v3 with two goals at either end to aim at. You're looking at about 20 to 25 metres across and around 30 metres long. Um, you can do this with a 3v3 or a 2v2. I mean, obviously, depending on your numbers on a training session, it may be that you have to increase it to a, a 4v4. But ideally, try to keep those numbers low, particularly with the younger players. So 2v2s and 3v3s work really well. And as you could probably see, there are a lot of benefits to Fininho and... Starting with the goals, four goals, more options, um, because one goal will likely always be undefended. Um, you'll see that the players are having to work on their peripheral vision, not just their tunnel vision with focusing on that one goal, so it's great for their awareness. Uh, and, that, and that's both attacking and defending. Loads of decisions to make triangles that get spoken about a lot in football making those triangles with your teammates to um to get some you know pretty good one twos going and um, and passing in between the lines and so forth support play off the ball so more touches lots of lots more problem solving lots more decisions to make more shots more dribbles more passing opportunities more time and space there's no positions there's going to be underloads and overloads at times so there's a lot going on in just this one activity and it's a, it's one way you you as a coach can stand back and just observe um the what it does very well and what we've noticed it does very well it establishes the basic skills but in a game context so what i mean by that is we want our players to pass well we want our players to dribble well and shoot well but we're all guilty and certainly we have of coaching those things on an isolate or in an isolated basis so they're learning to pass without a defender unopposed you put them into a game situation it takes them a lot longer to pass it as well as they have been unopposed when they are opposed this game is great because there's a little bit more space and that means a little bit more time so they're going to be practicing their passing but in more of a game context it's going to be opposed so it is really, really useful in that in that regard because everything that they're doing, learning those basic skills, they're doing it in a game scenario. So they might not be able to look like they're passing as well as they would do if things were unopposed, but it's more specific to the game. And as time goes on, you'll just see they're passing it well, but it's more relevant to what they're going to need in those match situations. It also means that all three players and all six players in the game are involved. There's no hiding. There's no twiddling of thumbs like you sometimes get in a 5v5, 7v7 or a 9v9 in training. Every player has to be involved. So it's really, really useful when it comes to getting people going, getting people on the ball. It's um, You will just see a lot more from them all, really. And as coaches, there's ways that we can modify it depending on the needs of your players and ability levels. You can limit touches. You can have it rules such as every player's got to have the ball before you can score a goal. Every player's got to have a pass before you can score a goal. Things like working on your weaker foot. You can only shoot with your weaker foot. Um, this, great, this game, by the way, is great for things like back foot receiving, receiving side on, which is a big thing that we all want to coach our players. Because there's two options to go at, it means that if they have the right body position, they can drive the ball into into sp into a different space, into a space where they want to go, but they've got two options for it. So we've just found that it's really, really good in that regard in terms of, of working on that back foot receiving. So let's have a look at it in action. So this is one of our development sessions and... For coaches, obviously, we don't have the luxury of four players turning up, six players turning up. We normally get, 
you know, whether it be 16, we might have nine, we might have seven, who knows? So here's an example of what we do. So we've got a Fininho game going on on the left with the four white goals, as you can see. And then on the right hand side here, we've just got a little 2v2. Um, so we've just used the numbers that, that turn up on the day and we've adapted it accordingly. So you can do this. We, we've done things like football tennis before, 1v1s. But the great thing about having that second pitch and having that more traditional game is you can play around with it. You can have some overloads, some underloads, 3v2s, 2v1s, 1v1s, whatever it might be. And it just gives them something different. So the left-hand side, you've, you've hopefully got the 3v3 for Nino. Uh, Right-hand side, uh, just mix and match it and, and just let them try different things. You'll see that you'll get so much more out of a session by using just this game and it, it develops so much if you use it consistently these guys here they've been using it for a few weeks we've still got work to do with them but you just start to see week on week they get it they get that they've got more space they get that if they pull out wide when uh, when their teammates got the ball it's going to create space for them to perhaps receive it to drive forward or it's going to create space for their teammate to drive into it just comes without you actually having to be stopping it every two minutes and telling them what to do and how to do it. So if you want to get this into your sessions, you can use it as your match at the end, we sometimes do, or you can simply use it as maybe a 10 minute game before the game at the end, whatever it might be, but it is useful and an easy one to get into your sessions that is massive for development and like i say we've been using this now for a good couple of years across the um, across the sessions that we do and we, we re we've really seen the benefits and we're going to continue to use and adapt it accordingly but definitely worth having a look at and let us know how you get on let us know what, what successes you have what difficulties you have any progressions regressions that you think are really good for it and we look forward to hearing from you soon